super duper items, but during the early stage, I feel they would probably just put the Lash as the primary warder and just mm. the support hero. Interesting. Enigma, <laughs> what a pickup, man. I'm looking at this team secret. Could very easily be five cores, um, the, the heroes that they've picked up here. Yes, five cores. I mean, you can't play it, but it certainly, That's, these are all this is a like transition. The push, the push is real. They're going to yeah. go for the timing push. They're going to try and finish the game. I, I'd say, like, icons are. Sometimes you can still afford to go past 30 minutes mm -hmm. and finish the game by 35 or 40. Maybe for other other pushing carries you can't say that, but for Lycan, because he still has like some late game strength in the hero itself. Mm. Alright, so it should be a push versus, and in a lot of ways, push here. And when you look at the lineups, you look at the drafts, oh, what do you think of the two? Do you think that Team Secret, is it an advantage or are they at a disadvantage because of how uh... greedy they've gotten? I, I would say uh, if they can go past the early game unscathed, remember the game, mm. I'm not sure if you watched the game against, uh, they ran the Enigma against LGD, and oh, LGD tried to do dual mm -hmm. aggressive, like a dual lane on the off lane to try and pressure, but it failed, and they just got into oh, such a bad six. position where they lost mm -hmm. the whole early game by 10 minutes, and they were in so much problem. I'm not sure whether E-Home, they just weren't going to, you know, standard, protect the Lycan in the safe lane and just, Wait for his items before they push and take Roshan, obviously, and just leave our TK all alone at bottom. So we'll see how it goes. Let's do some quick introductions for the Dire side. We've got Ehome in the lineup. We've got YJ, who I guess goes by a lot of names. You may know him as Yang, uh, as a... Uh... I, I'm going to go with YJ because that's what he's got listed, and I know that he changes his name a fair amount. So we've got YJ on the Lycan. We're going to have ROTK on the Undying, Lanham on the Dazzle, and following up behind them, we're going to have DDC on the Disruptor and CTY on the Storm Spirit. Now it looks like we might have an engagement here on the bottom as we look. YJ going to lead the charge in, sees as four. Starts to go in, but the whole group is here. Uh, who wants wow. this fight more? As Zai comes out, starts below harass on ROTK. ROTK out in front with that dirge, looking like a possible engagement. Did pick up Decay first, and they will just push Secret backwards. But Secret not withdrawing completely. They are sticking around. Out come the ice shards. Locks two away from the rest of the group. Wow. ROTK goes in deep. Kuroki in tight. Lots of damage coming out. YJ dropping pretty low. Kuroki able to get out. YJ drops, and ROTK gets the first blood on the Zai. Now S4 in some trouble tries to run he goes down as well out comes a stun from Arteza to buy a little bit of space but it is a one for two early on and Ehome gets off to a pretty good start dude look at the undying strength he has like seven charges of the DK that was uh <laughs> that was like that was some good DKs that, that was like off why with. undying is one of the best level one heroes <laughs> So early on, makes a good move, gets a uh, great start for Ehome. You said that Secret has to survive into uh, past the early game. And this is about, I don't want to say as yeah. bad a start as you could get, but it's not and great. They're, they're giving the bounty rune to the Enigma as well, because he took Midnight Pulse to try and win the fight. But mm -hmm. they are playing the draft not as greedy as I was expecting, because they are putting the Naga on the support role, which actually gives the rest of the heroes a lot more space. And they're putting Lash on the farming, on the solo mid role. So this Rookie's would mean gonna that find they are some less DDC. Greedy. Uh, he, is he going to be able to run him down with the and speed? Does not look like it, but he definitely put a good amount of damage. Nice ice shards to zone a little bit, but it's still not going to be enough. DDC, or, or will it? Kuroki thinks about... Dire structures are fortified. He's the one taking a lot of damage as DDC turns right back around. He's going to... Hmm, that Thunderstrike putting in some work. He's going to need to take a long way back. Either, otherwise, he might want to suicide to the Ancients and just mm -hmm. get a free trip back to the Fountain. Maybe not. He's just going to pull the wave back to the lane for Zai. Yeah, a very a costly start for him as he comes around. DDC comes right back, finds Zai. Zai thinks about harassing DDC, but decides it's best to just head back towards lane. Meanwhile, let's look at the mid lane. Where we've got the matchup of CTY versus RTZ, the Lashrak versus the Storm Spirit. What should we be looking for in this mid matchup? Um, I think the main thing for the Lash is whether his teammates are able to set up an early rotation for him. Because it's a Naga, he needs to wait for level 2 before he gets his ensnare. Mm. With the ensnare, I would think that they have a good chance of killing the Storm Spirit before he's level 6. So they might they might want to move uh, maybe in 
after the second rune, I think, after the storm picks up the second rune, he goes back to lane and you try to make a rotation after that. I, I mean the two minute rune, not the second rune, sorry. Absolutely. Lanham, by the way, down here harassing uh, the Enigma puts up a nice... Nice sentry ward here to keep that camp from respawning. Down the bottom lane, we've got a solo right now. S4 matching up against ROTK's Dirge. Uh, who has the advantage in this position? Um, usually, you would obviously say Undying's going to have a tough tougher time against Razor, but because of how the game started, he got two kills off the bat. So I would say Undying will be just fine in this thing. It's probably 50 50 because mm. of the kills he got in before the wave, uh, before the creeps spawn. Makes sense. We see Lanham rotate down to the bottom, so now ROTK does have some uh, dedicated support here in this lane, which make it even harder for S4 to function. Over in the mid, we are going to see Lashrak at 12 and 4 versus... ...doing pretty well to start off. And let's take a look at the top as uh, Zion... ...doing what they can here. How's this top lane really need to go? They just need to make sure that Lycan doesn't get, like, he's under pressure. He doesn't get so much farm, like, free farm wise. Because you can't let Lycan free farm without in getting something in exchange. In this situation, they want to make sure that the Lycan's pushing strength doesn't come early. So, that obviously they'll try their best to kill him in the lane, but it's not going to be easy. So it looks like that's a s interesting. What do you think? Let's talk about the support, Nago. Or first off, let's go to the bottom, where RTK's put out a tombstone. Sport in some trouble. Heal's gonna come out. Link is up to try and slow down that damage. Come. Wow, that was close. One more hit will do it. He gets close. away. The stick charges, keeping him alive there. Beautiful, beautiful stick. So while we see him survive that, nice plays by S4 to stay alive. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the choice to make this Naga a support. Uh, it's, I think it's mainly less greedy compared to the less support. <laughs> and because if you put Naga mid, Naga is going to have a tougher time against Storm. And secondly, because they have a jungling hero, they have Enigma, of course. Because the Naga mid is mostly consuming a lot of resource and top lane they're actually gonna run oh, they're gonna go to the snowball DDC. make the chance at ddc ddc in some trouble shards wrap around and down he goes making it two yeah. for two a nice attack here zion kuroki getting that kill pretty they're easily actually, they're actually doing a lot of damage with the snowball plus the minus armor from rip mm. that's true that's a pretty good combo J trying to keep pace here starts falling off a little bit 16 and 1 uh really oh, dead trend. even with zion in terms of farm down the bottom s4 again getting dived Tom tombstone comes out the chase is on doesn't look like s4 will get out of this one as he does have the link yeah. but land him there just look at lamb's skill build as well he's going for the much more aggressive he mm. had two points in poison before level four so two poison and one heal so he was expecting that he needed to be very aggressive in a lane you very rarely see dazzles put more than one point in poison touch early on but it shows you what they plan to do in the lanes itself already yeah definitely they're being very aggressive already starting to put some damage on the tower down to half and rotk will back away lanham heads up towards the mid gets a nice rune up here to make life just a touch bit easier for cty who is level six got that bottle on him meanwhile checking with puppy who's got his soul ring and level five almost to six so he's uh he's getting back on pace for having to take that midnight pulse early yeah. on and I was uh, go going back to the point where the reason I feel the Naga is a support this game is because of the Enigma. Like you have heroes that are using the jungle already, so you don't want you don't want to have too many of that on the same team. Because if you put Naga in middle, he wants to use the jungle as well. Middle lane, they're gonna go on RTZ with the double damage. And out oh, comes close. the ulti, but does not stop the death, but it will turn around. They go on CTY, out comes the Shallow Grave, buys him some time, tries uh, to jump, but's got... Ice shards come out unnecessary, and they get the kill. So a one for one over in the mid position, but they did have to use that black. I mean, hole. it was a it was a really good attempt to try and save the mm -hmm. last shard though. So even though he died, but it was a good attempt. Absolutely. All right. So three to four. Gold lead is dead even. XP slightly in Secret's favor at this point. Elam got off to a big start, but it feels like Secret sorta has just gotten themselves right back into this. Now we see a rotation around the harassment on ROTK as he is forced out of lane the second the Dazzle leaves. Uh, the guys from Secret start to show him that he's no longer allowed to play as aggressively oh, as he was before. Yeah, here comes the Storm. He's gonna find an Invis rune, but you know, that was a really good play from RTK there. There was a ward. He saw Artezi teleporting in, but he didn't back off right away. Mm. He didn't want to give away that the fact that there was a ward, and he just backed immediately. He wanted to bait Artezi to waste his time to come in and drop some spells before he get out. And CTY we... comes around, Invis catches Artezi. Artezi gets caught with the static. Right click. 
Nexa there, and that'll be a dead Arteezy. I feel like we've seen this start for him. S4 now. Has just enough mana to try and close this deal out. S4. And S4 will survive. So I can take one more tower shot. Should <laughs> down to the Lycan uh, wolves. Still a big kill for them. The Lycan is already severely shut down this game. He uh, he even got a tranquil boots because of the pressure he was facing in the lane as well. That's not the boots that a Lycan generally does, but unless you're under severe pressure. Meanwhile, Puppy goes into his opponent's jungle with his brown boots. Gonna go ahead and farm up some of those camps and then withdraws before anybody finds out about his movement. S4 and ROTK still head-to-head -head here on the bottom lane. What's it starting to shape up like? Eight minutes in, taking a look at the map, taking a look at the kills. Who do you think is starting to show in control? Uh, I think Secret is so far doing a good job because their primary concern is make, making sure that the Lycan's pushing rhythm doesn't come as... doesn't come early. Oh, the career died to... The Enigma, I think. Mm. Yeah, what? with nothing on it. Yeah, but the, it was a lot of gold. That's why I'm Absolutely. Obs observable what inside and the smoke. The smoke was probably for the Lycan to do rush mm. later on. So they might have to get another one. Bottom lane. Bottom lane, it looks like they're going again. Nice call as they do manage to catch out the Dirge. The good rotation from S4 or Zai to join S4 there on the bottom lane. And Secret, like you said, starting to really kind of find their pace and doing a good job of getting themselves uh, into a pretty good position in this game. They are in gold lead now as well as continuing to maintain that XP lead and Puppy doing a good job of just floating between these two jungles getting that pick off and just managing his levels very very quickly already almost to level nine this task is actually doing a lot of work like moving around zai was moving around and the hero itself doesn't need any items just needs levels and he's going to be helping his team a lot and now we see the first five man group from ehom i mean four man group from ehom they're going to try and take the top tower all right so the push is live here on the top lane so we'll take a look at that big three-man rotation coming out from Secret as they start to send up their defense. Meanwhile, on the bottom, Puppy. This, this might be dangerous. This might be Stem dangerous. Out. We are going to lose Kuroki one like six. He's like one one creep away from level six, mm. and they can set up a song plus black hole. Song, midnight pulse, and black hole. All one after another. All right, so that gold lead has actually climbed pretty dramatically in Secret's favor and uh, continues to do so. All that time and put into Ehome rotating towards the top lane and they can't make anything of it. They have... uh, the Eidolon's just tearing into that tower already down to half and that was just because Puppy took advantage of that rotation towards the top. Yeah, that, that was just the, the reason why Secret is not afraid to play up against five-man heat like lineups like the Undying. They know how to deal against it and how to make sure that they get more resource from the map compared to you constantly find many. Alright, let's go take a look up at the, uh, the jungle right now as YJ goes into the jungle, Yang trying to get himself back on track. He is doing pretty well in terms of the CS. Let's look at the net worth stack chart and you're going to see that Storm Spirit is up on top, but then it goes two, three, four, five, all on the side of Radiant. Uh, getting that farm like we've seen them do in so many games lately they seem to sort of keep that farm really evenly distributed across their course yeah they want to make uh, middle lane storm is going in cty making a move on s4 s4 is trying to get away gets caught inside the static could be in some trouble ro wow when you get out what? puppy comes in gets set back with a beautiful and we're gonna have to use the song will they turn around and try to go in Done. Kuroki is going to go down. To the soul rip, and he's going to try to get away. DDC also low, but he goes to the other. Here comes CTY from the backside. ROTK still alive. Turns back around. Our Snowball of Doom. We lost our TZ. Zai goes ahead and finishes one. He wants to chase to the high ground. They get the Storm Spirit.
Links up on Lanham. Lanham in some trouble. He could go down here, making it four. What's the story with the dirge? He's trapped by Zai. Zai turns around, has to run away, but the ice shards are holding in place as the rest of the team comes in. High ground tombstone hitting Zai back and forth, but they're trying to flank through the jungle, buying a little bit of time, and he will ultimately go down with a nice shot from the ice shard. And it is a five-man wipe going the way of secret. Oh, it didn't it, it didn't Three start for five. Off well for them, but they still managed to pull it off. The black hole got cancelled by the glimpse and mm -hmm. E Holmes, he, they look like they were gonna win the fight after the the grave on the storm, but the fight like dragged on so long and secrets heroes because they were able like the lightning storm and the plasma field were like doing so much damage plus the ice shots ever as well like long uh, short cooldown spells which actually have a lot of spammability are very good in the long fights the drag out fights. So that was uh, that was that was good for secret, not great for E Home. Uh, that's you know we talked you talked about need to get out of the early game with a little bit of uh, survival not even needing to be in front XP of 3,000, uh, would you say that that's coming out into the mid game the way yeah, that they wanted to? They, they want this to happen and if you look at Puppy's item selection as well, he's going for Vanguard on Enigma so he mm. probably wants to get the Crimson Guard which is good against Lycan and, and the Undying Zombies as well so He's good. It's very rare that you see Enigma build that goes into this build. Arteezy putting a lot. ROTK gonna go in real deep, but his TPs are coming in. S4 and Arteezy there. Stone is down. The chase is on. Arteezy putting out a lot of damage, jumps into the snowball, goes after CT. Back to make sure that happens. S4 dropping low. Gonna go ahead and make the attack on CT. Up the shallow grave. Will it be enough? It doesn't look like it. They cancel the escape. C walks away, the lone survivor and the casualty for C. This is unraveling quickly for the guys. Yeah, I know. they took a really deep dive with the, like, with the tombstone. They put the tombstone in beside the tier one. I think they sent and they glimpse the Naga away as well, and they, that's why they were they were fighting four versus five because Naga got glimpsed away. But they still lost the fight. They still lost the fight despite that. And there was no black hole as well in that fight. So it tells you that Secret are very far ahead in terms of uh, net worth already. When you are able to take a fight like this and you still win. <laughs> Alright, so they do push in, get that tower back away. All the tier 1's down now. Elm uh, starting to rapidly lose map. Damn. Skyrocket to almost 7,500 off of that. 40 minute Crimson ah. God threats. That's, that's beautiful. And it all started with, with that bounty rune at the beginning. So, uh, Secret coming back from that rough patch in the bottom lane, really putting the fight to E Home. If you're sitting in E Home's uh, position right now, you know. Important game. You don't want to give Secret the 1 0 advantage on a single elimination tournament. You know, whoever loses this best of three is out. What do you do? What's your plan to get yourself back in? I think into they this? have to start farming up their cost. And the ne I think the next best move for them is try to sneak a Roshan after whenever they feel there's a good chance to actually get the Roshan. Without the Aegis, I think it's very hard for them to push with the Lycan because they are far behind. And Secret's lineup is team fight based lineup which is good against pushing lineups all right let's take a look at items any big items come out that we need to kind of keep our eyes on here on the bottom they want to make a move s4 is going to go ahead and pop the ultimate kinetic field going to be put out going to get stunned he's in some trouble puts up the shallow grave to buy some time goes to the tp do they have anything to stop yeah, they, it they don't they have the black hole, but they felt it wasn't worth it to use a black hole on a support there so it's a very understandable situation mm -hmm. and i think it's not worth it as well to use the black hole for the dazzle there absolutely so dazzle... It, if, if you're the support you're tipping on it's like okay whatever he used a black hole on me it, it's you, you you just take it it's a good trade in my opinion so he does a good job, gets away, and uh, I think, you know, I, I agree with you. I think that that's probably the right choice there. 7,500 in terms of XP, 75 uh, on, on gold as well, and Secret continues to yeah. run away with this at the moment. And look at the vision as well. Both sides having 
good vision like secret has vision over the, almost half of the jungle and half of the area of the ancients and roche because they know that e home snake's plan and, re and remaining move is to try and secure the ages preferably for the swarm mm. so that they can actually push so they have a lot of vision over there unless they decide to smoke like at least three to four heroes that and that would be obvious so they have very good map control to know when the roshan is going down for e home E-Home looks like they may be rotating, or they were thinking about rotating down towards that bottom lane to try and take their first tier one, but immediately Secret in response brings everyone down to the bottom lane as well. See everybody gathering up, but look at this. Yeah. That's, that's just really, right now. you know, a really good, you know, warding in general when you're moving and pushing around. Like, you, when you're getting all the creeps pushed over to the enemy side, you want to take advantage of it by placing wards into deep into the enemy territory. All right, so they immediately respond to the middle as as pushes develop from E-Home trying to get through these towers. See Secret is quick on the draw to get there and take it away. E-Home is going to go ahead. Lashrak picks up the Bloodstone. We do see the Soul Booster finished up on CTY. Uh, he is looking like he's a little far behind here, uh, having trouble getting caught back up with everybody else. 6100 is a uh, seems like a tough a tough start for. Yeah, him and I, I was thinking the the other reason why he actually might have built the Trankers is maybe him he, he was making he was trying to buy Vlads and he because you 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 buy the components and if you have your boots on and it. it he accidentally makes it into a trend because I'm not sure if that's the case, but he's gonna run into a lot of heroes. So, that see big later. smoke rotation gonna find themselves some YJ. YJ goes for the TP, can't get out of there, locked in place and burned down without too much trouble. Secret gets a good pick. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, E Home gonna try to at least capitalize on that space as they push down the bottom lane looking at the tower, but at the same time, Secret's gonna do the same on the top lane. I wonder if they're gonna try and defend the bottom tower. I'm checking on TPs. They don't have a TP on Enigma, so well, he's gonna get one now. Ah, they're not gonna defend it. They're just gonna push the other lanes, so they middle do. and top. So they allow bottom to go down, middle and top, just like he says, starting to be pushed. Uh, though Ehome will have the ability to go back and defend this. They've got the TP scrolls to get back there, and uh, will will Secret get a tower out of this? It looks like they're gonna get that top. Yeah, I think they're gonna get the top one. The middle one, I don't think they can. Maybe later, but they're gonna get the top one for now. But mm -hmm. E-Home looks like they want to fight. Storm just finished his Bloodstone. And they finished the mech on the Undying like a couple of minutes ago as well. Mm -hmm. So both sides having the mech now. All right, gonna go ahead, throw out that Ice Shard to start. Pops too. In comes CTY, goes on Puppy. Puppy locked in place. Yeah, but he gets picked up by the snowball. What a play. Kroki comes in, puts out the siren. Drops. Knocked up in the air. That's Lanham getting low. ROTK. Guards just missed CTY. Uh, But will I, they be I able to stop it. this at all? Even with three heroes, I don't think they can. Maybe with five heroes, they can mm -hmm. try and buy back. But because the other two doesn't have buyback, I don't think he, they can defend this. So well, meanwhile, YJ does go down to the mid lane, pushes that middle tower. We do see the racks dropping as well. So Secret not only gets the tier two out of that fight, they walk three and the racks. A little bit of harassment from CTY stops the TP to the mid, which is a good choice by time for YJ to get out but what a costly loss for Ehome yeah, on that top it's just evident lane. that Secret's lineup is just really like the song he, they just needed to cast the song kill the tombstone and in addition it's set up for the two man black hole there for the enigma as well so the song was like a very good usage there in the last fight and it was the main reason why they Ehome just lost the fight from there all right, so we're going to see Ehome immediately smoke, try to get something done. By the way, the gold lead is 15,000 in the favor of Team Secret here at the 21-minute mark. XP is 10,000 for them as well, and they have the top four three farmers on the net worth chart, so things looking very, very good. Yeah. In goes Secret. They have, They're going to get hit by the they have Dazzle to try and Weave. fight when Black Hole and Song is done. Mm -hmm. So they do put up the Weave that uh, Secret sees it and will back away. Maybe... 
come in. Ice shards come down. ROTK already taking a lot of damage. Shallow Grave comes out. TK heals himself up. They've lost the Tusk. But will it go? YJ. In trouble as S4 wants to get. Whoa, what I miss? Can't breathe. The escape goes short range, but not far. He will fall. It's a five man wipe. ROTK put game in this tournament in under 25 minutes what a game by secret uh, this game is a very good example of knowing they know how to adjust and change up their strategies and stuff like that to make sure that even though it seems like they had a greedy lineup but they know how to utilize it and they switch up the naga and basically the main thing is they switch up the naga and the lash position so lash having more farm being so the whole team in general is able to deal with